Hey developers, today we're going to look at how to get GraphQL working with our Vue.js app and we're going to use something called Hasra to make that a lot easier. So make sure you stay all the way to the end and I'll show you how that works. Hey, and if you don't know, my name is Eric. I'm a full stack software developer. I'm also the author of the Vue.js in action book. So if you're interested in getting the first chapter of that book, absolutely free, make sure you click in the description. I actually have it right there. So you can see here, here's the app that we're, that I created. It's really, really simple. And by the way, I just want to give a shout out to Marion. Uh, I actually helped, I actually uh, read her guide and I'll make sure I put a link there description below. Her blog is very similar to this app. So uh, I was going to say, okay, let's create a new title. So it's a movie, so I don't know. Um, we can do lo uh, Lost. That's a TV show, but it doesn't matter. Uh, Mr. Smith, composer, test composer, release date, and we'll put 2012 for 7. And if I click Send here, you can see here now I have this list down here. It's just uh, kind of just a funny list I put together. I didn't really uh, format it very well, but you can see loss is now added to the end of this list. And of course, if we refresh, it gets added in here. And this is all being pulled from our Hasra. So if you haven't heard about that, it, you can see here, it's an instant real-time GraphQL on Postgres. So basically, it connects your GraphQL API to Postgres, and it has this really cool interface to make it really easy to add new schemas and add new tables and things like that. And what I did is I got started free with the Heroku free tier. If you click here, it'll actually tell you what you need to do. You just click this deploy to Heroku button. It'll make you sign into Heroku. And then from there, you, it'll go ahead and just build it, everything for you. It's really, really simple. And then you'll get a, your own URL to start playing around with it 100% for free. Oh, and, and if you weren't interested in that, you can get started with Docker, you know, DigitalOcean, AWS, Azure, Google Cloud, wherever you want, you can get download it and get it up and running. Pretty simple. Once you do that, this is what you'll see. Actually, it'll be a little bit different this, but you'll have this GraphQL API dashboard where you can run GraphQL um, queries here. What well, one cool thing about it, and this is what I did, is I clicked on the data at the top and I created this new table. So I clicked add table, kind of looks like this, and asks you for the column names. Um, and then a default value, and then you can set a primary key, and you click Add Table. So at the end of it, I got this table here. Uh, so you could see the if I click Modify here, this is what I made it. I have an ID as my primary key. I have a title, release date, director, and composer, and then I also made the ID auto updating, just Gen Random UUID. So this is kind of cool interface here. This is basically, uh, it's almost like I'm, I'm have a data explorer for my Postgres database. So I can create rows, I can create these different schemas and I can even do relationships if I wanted to. And I can set permissions and, and I can do all that really easily. And you can see here's the four titles I have in here. Here's the last one I added, just lost. So that's really cool. Now, since I added these, uh, since I added the schema in here, if you go back to GraphQL and I look at the docs here, I look at the query root, it already created all the fields for me for GraphQL. I didn't have to do any of this. Once I added in this table, it just kind of automatically created. So now I have my movies, my aggregates. So my movies, um, I have distinct, I could do limit offsets. This is all created for me. Here's my composer, director, ID, release date. So for example, um, I can do, if I do the right kind of, work here. I can do movies and then inside my movies I can let's say I want to list out the composers and the titles and then run it. You can see here now I have here's the four ones with composer and title so I can do my queries here. I can do an explorer. I, it's really simple, really easy to use and it's all set up. Also just case in point, you can see here, I you don't have this GraphQL endpoint is completely public, so actually anybody can um, mess around with your GraphQL. Right now it's just for a test, I, I don't mind, but there is a pretty involved way that you can 
set some security up, which uh, looking at the documentation didn't seem too bad, but I could see once you get a pretty complicated system that it would be a little bit more uh, difficult. So here under authentic authentication access controls, it tells you a little bit how you can either do it using authorization, use JWT or webhooks, even mentions how do you do is use it through like Firebase or Auth0 or something like else like that. So keep that in mind. But just for a fun pretend app that we're playing with, this works great. Okay, so I have the app open up here. And so the first thing you wanna do is create the Vue.js app as you normally would. So make sure you have Vue CLI installed and then do Vue create the name of the app. And then you'll need to install some dependencies. So the ones that I prefer that you can see right here are the this these ones right here. And by the way, the code for this project, I'll go ahead and throw it up in GitHub. You'll see the link in the description below. So we wanna install Apollo Client, Apollo Cache, in memory, Apollo link HTTP, GraphQL dash tag, GraphQL, QAL, and view Apollo. And then make sure you uh, save that, and that will go ahead and save into your app itself. So since I already did that, I won't do it again. After you have everything installed through an npm install, I would go to the main.js file, and this is where you're gonna set up the GraphQL. So first, make sure you import in the Apollo client, Make sure you also import, uh, import in view Apollo, and then HTTP link, and then the in-memory cache, and then make sure inside your new view that you add the Apollo provider, which we'll create in one second here. And so this is what the Apollo provider is gonna look like. So you do const Apollo provider equal new view Apollo, and then we put default client, which is the Apollo client, which I'll show you in a second which is you do view use view Apollo. The Apollo client looks like this. So we do view, basically I'm creating new const for new Apollo client, connect to dev, to, to dev tools true, link is the HTTP link, new is the in memory cache. And then we're also for the HTTP link, this is basically the URL of our Heroku app. So you can see here, I added this v1 alpha 1 slash GraphQL. Make sure you do that. That's very important. So that's essentially what you need in your main.js file to get ready for GraphQL before anything will start working. So if we look at our app, we could see we have a different section here. We have this add section. This is our add Vue.js component. Then we have our list of our movies at the bottom here. And then we have this little course view symbol at the top. So the way I set that up, if you look in the app.view, and I'm not gonna code along for you guys on this, so if you want to follow along, just download the code yourself and then take a look, is uh, we I created this add movie component, this movie list component, of course the logo you see, and just like normal Vue.js, I added it into the components array and I imported them in so that way we can use it throughout the app. So let me show you how uh, how to add in, first with the add movie, to add in v GraphQL into it. All right, inside this add movie view file, you can see here I have a submit, form submit at the top, which I'm preventing the default on. And then I just have these title, director, composer, and release date as V models, as you can see from here, these four right here. And then, I have the data for those four, and then I have a submit button. So right now we don't have anything with GraphQL, but let's go ahead and add that in. So the first thing we wanna do is start importing in the library we want. So we're gonna add in the GraphQL tag library and the in-memory cache, which we'll need. And what we're gonna do here now is add in this add movie GQL. And this GQL is from the GraphQL tag library. And this is how we're gonna create queries so that when we talk to our GraphQL, it understands what we wanna add. And the, the GraphQL queries, there's a lot of information out there. I would recommend just kind of look at the official documentation, start looking at different examples of how to do this because there's a lot of ways you can do different queries. It's pretty powerful. And that's one of the reasons you might wanna consider using GraphQL because it's pretty neat adding it to your app. So uh, what I'm gonna do show you here is first we have this mutation called add movie, and then we basically tell it that we're going to be sending it the title, the director, the composer, and the release date. And then 
we're going to have this kind of complex structure here, but I'll show you. It's this insert movies right here. And what this does is, is it allows us, if we trigger this mutation, then it's going to take this object array and it's going to add the title, director, composer, and release date, and it's going to return an ID for us. Then we have this optional Apollo parameter that we can add in, which we should. And then we're going to create a new, um, I'll show you here, it's a new, this dollar sign Apollo, which now we have dollar sign Apollo is available to us because we added it in inside the main JS file and we're going to do a mutation. So every time you click submit, the submit method gets triggered where we'll destructure this dollar sign data, which is basically right here. So we're, we're, we're destructuring the data just to grab the title, director, and composer and release data out. You could just um, do it a couple different ways. This is fine the way to do it like this. Then mutation add movie. It takes those. It adds those variables. Um, does this refresh query for get movies at the end, and then it sets everything to blank. So that way everything will be blank. And that's 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 it. So as soon as you hit submit, it does it. It goes ahead and mutates it and uh, submits it to the GraphQL. For the movie lists, for the movie list component to add GraphQL in there, but th basically this is every single movie is its own component, and so we pass in. Well, excuse me. The movie list is this whole, all these movies, all the list of movies together, and then there's a movie item, which is each individual movie and how it's displayed. So I basically created a list of movies. I did some really simple flex container on it. That's why it's kind of stacking this way on it. And then the movie item, which we'll show you, which I'll show you in a second, is just a, um, we just go through all the different movies, which is an array. And then I pass in the, the movie item itself and also the key for it. So add GraphQL in there, because what we want to do is actually grab the GraphQL list of movies. Is First, I want to make sure I import in um, Apollo. And then inside Apollo, I'm going to do this query for get movies. And this is where you definitely need to use the Apollo object here. Then I'm going to use the GQL to get the movies here. And this is where I write the query again. Once I, again, this is going to be a lot simpler query. I just do query, get movies, add the movies here, and release date, ID, composer. This is all the things I want to do. You can basically copy and paste either one of these queries into our API Explorer to test them out, by the way. It's a good way to test things. And uh, I got to make sure I import movie item and GQL. And that's it. So from there, it, uh, so once this movie list gets loaded, it will be able to go and do the GraphQL as soon as it loads there. The movie item doesn't have any GraphQL in it. It's basically it just takes that movie item that's passed into it and then displays everything. And then the app.view, like I showed before, just shows the add movies in the movie list. So that's all there is to it. If I refresh it again, uh, I have to restart it on um, npm run serve. But it should work once I restart it. Restart it. Yep, there it is. It should add that back in there once I add a new one in here. So I can go back and add one in there. Let's see. Yep, there it is. SDF 2012.03. Perfect. So everything's working as we expect it. So that's just a real quick way of adding GraphQL to an existing project. I would, um, there's a lot of different ways you can talk to a back end right now. There's back ends as a service. Uh, I think GraphQL is really interesting and I'm learning more and more about it. And I just wanted to share with you guys this easy way of doing it. Let me know in the comments below if you guys enjoyed this tutorial and what you liked about it. And if you have any questions, make sure you also click that like and subscribe. I appreciate it. Thanks.